Hello everyone. So I finally picked a motherboard and today we're going to talk about my decision that landed me on the Asus X570 Pro Wi-Fi. Now the last time I did a video I was outside and we had planes going by. I had the AC and the wind creating a drone that I couldn't EQ out. So today we're going to do this video right here at my desk so you can hear me and my squeaky chair. So in today's video we're going to cover why AMD, why I chose an X570 motherboard, comparison with other motherboards that I was considering, the difference between an Asus Tough Pro and the Asus Tough Plus, how I saved almost 40% on the price, and then we're gonna do an unboxing, and we're gonna talk about specs. Sound good? Let's go. First thing you have to decide when picking a motherboard is whether or not you want to go with AMD or Intel, red or blue. I'm going to go more into detail about the differences in processors in a different video, so for this one I'll keep it brief. AMD is better than Intel. Triggered! Hear me out. So the thing is, Intel, the 12th generation processors, they're better than the AMD processors out right now. But the problem with the 12th gen Intel processor is that, you know, they change the chipset every couple years. So you have to get a new motherboard and you need to get a Z690 motherboard to support an Intel 12th gen CPU. Now these boards support DDR5 usually and PCIe5 and that's going to drive the prices of these boards up. Not to mention if you have a 12th gen Intel and you want to utilize it to its maximum capability, you're going to want to get DDR5 and right now DDR5 RAM is like one, it's hard to find and two, again, it's expensive. And in my honest opinion, PCIe 5 is pointless at this point, right? Uh, the graphics cards we have barely use the speeds available with PCIe 4. Honestly, you could throw it on a PCIe 3 and it's not gonna bottleneck your graphics card. Also, Intel processors are just not as efficient as AMD processors and that means that it's gonna generate more heat. Now, with more heat, that means you need more cooling. That means you have more fans in there, you're putting more heat out into your room. Both of those things drive your electric bill up. So either you have to have more fans or your fans are running at higher speeds, which means more noise. My PC is right here next to my head. I would like to keep it as reasonably quiet as possible. So really for me, if I went with an Intel, I would have to go with the 10th or 11th generation Intel processor. And at that level, the Ryzen, AMD's Ryzen processors outperformed those. So AMD was a clear winner. All right, now that you decided to go with AMD, you have to pick the chipset for your motherboard. So with AMD processors, you either want to go with an X570 or a B550. And that's to be as future-proof as possible. You can't really be future-proof with PCs. AMD is dropping their new AM5 socket third quarter of this year, so after September 2022. One, I don't want to wait that long to build my PC. And two, you know, whenever they come out with a new socket, there's always going to be problems with how technology is and things need to get worked through. So there's going to be, you know, driver updates, BIOS updates, uh, bug fixes and stuff. So realistically, I wouldn't even consider switching over to AM5 until like a couple years from now. So until then, this will do fine. Now between X570 and B550, B550 boards tend to be a little bit cheaper than X570 boards, but I think you give up a lot of features that I think are important. One of those features, B550 supports one PCIe 4 and then one PCIe 4 for your NVMe, which is your storage. X570, you get PCIe 4 all the way around, right? This isn't too big of an issue because like I said, you're not really gonna get bottlenecked by anything that's PCIe 3, but the new graphics cards are coming out. Nvidia is coming out with their 4000 series. AMD has their own line of uh, GPUs coming out. I think Intel's dropping Arc or something, but these processors might actually utilize PCIe 4 and maybe you wanna do two graphics cards. Nobody really does that anymore but if you want to, it's nice to have the option. One of the big reasons for me to go with the next 570 as well is that B550 boards don't support iGPUs or APUs. 
that's for integrated graphics on your CPU, right? So if you get like a Ryzen 7 uh, 5700G or a Ryzen 5 5600G, if it has a G at the end of it, it means that you can throw that CPU into your motherboard and you don't need a graphics card in order to run your PC. Now, I haven't decided yet which route I want to go because when you have integrated graphics, you are sacrificing a little bit of performance on the CPU. But, you know, some of the benefits are that if your GPU ever crashes, your computer's not toast, you'll still have display coming from your CPU. Two, I can have my computer up and running while I save up money to get a graphics card in the future. So I might go that route, and if I do, I would need an X570 board. Another difference, the X570 has better quality VRMs, that's your voltage regulating modules. And that means that you can overclock your CPU safer. More safe? Safer. Another big difference, the X570 boards can have eight USB connections that can handle 10 gigabytes a second, where the B550 boards normally have two. You know, the PC that I'm building, it's both a creator PC and a gaming PC, so I would like to have the connectivity option. Price difference, honestly, it's only like 20 bucks difference between a B550 and an X570. I honestly feel like you get way more than $20 worth of features on an X570 board. So for me, this was kind of a no-brainer, X570. Other boards that I was considering, I looked into, because I'm, I'm doing a white PC build, so I thought about getting the Gigabyte Vision, but the Vision is a B550 board and not an X570. I do think the Vision looks the best, but it's also very expensive. Brand new, they're like $300. You can probably pick up a used one on Amazon for like $211, I think it was. But the problem with the used ones, it doesn't have a lot of the accessories with it, like it won't have like the Wi-Fi antenna, it won't have the temperature sensors, it won't have the noise level sensors, right, to control your fan speeds and such. So I was also looking at the Gigabyte Aero X570S. Now the Aero line replaced the Vision line, so it is a newer board and it has all the connectivity options. And I, you know, I love that the Vision and the Aero lines are also creator motherboards, so it doesn't have like RGB everywhere. Like, I like a little bit of RGB, like my fans will have ARGB, but I don't need like RGB puke everywhere. It's overkill when you have your like motherboard blazing and stuff, but you know to each their own. Again, the problem with the Aero line was that it's so expensive. So brand new board costs like three hundred and thirty dollars. If you buy a used one, again you're not getting all the accessories with it. The other thing is Gigabyte seems to be having terrible customer reviews lately. They don't seem to be supporting any kind of problems and helping people work through it. If you look at the reviews on Amazon on the Aero X570. Yes, there's it's not good like people are complaining that you know it's crashing all the time they have all kinds of heating issues and some of the USBs don't work I don't want to purchase anything from a company that seems to be having customer problems the only other white motherboard that there was was the Asus Prime X570 I wasn't too keen on its looks it kind of looks a little bland to me, even though it's white. My big problem with the Prime was that it doesn't come with Wi-Fi. I think it was like 220 or 230 bucks. Like at that price point, you would think that Wi-Fi would be included. So I went online, I read a lot of reviews. Nearly 90% of the reviews mentioned the Asus X570 Plus. Nobody seems to have any problems with them. It's very reliable, you can overclock fine. And you know, Asus is known for their reliability and the quality of their products. And then also the Asus Tough. Some people don't like it, but it has the yellow accents on it. I actually kind of like the yellow accents. I kind of abandoned the whole white motherboard idea because it's going to be hidden behind components primarily anyway, so it's not that important. And I take functionality and practicality and performance over aesthetics any day. In my case, the Corsair 4000D, it has some yellow accents on there, so it's like, you know, that could work. Now, I almost purchased the Asus X570 Plus, but then I stumbled across the Asus X570 Pro. There's a lot of differences between them that I considered important. I think with all the reviews, the X570 Plus kind of overshadowed the fact that the X570 Pro even exists, but it's definitely a better motherboard. For example, the Plus supports Wi-Fi 5, but the Pro has Wi-Fi 6, which is the latest Wi-Fi. 
The Plus has Bluetooth 5.0, which is the older generation. The Pro has Bluetooth 5.1, and that's important because, you know, all your AirPods and stuff all use 5.1, so you're going to have zero latency between video and audio. Honestly, my biggest deciding factor was the fact that the Pro has USB front panel connectors and the Plus does not and I have USBs on the front of my case, the idea of not being able to use that bothered me. Performance wise, it performs better than the MSI Tomahawk, which was like another favorite. It can handle overclocking fine, right? It has all Japanese capacitors on it. It's got Realtek audio. The biggest difference I saw between the tough motherboard and like the ROG crosshairs or the Dark Hero is that the Dark Heroes or the ROG line, it has more VRMs, better power modules and stuff, so that, you know, it can, it can handle overclocking better, but that's pretty much like the only benefit I really see in it. So that doesn't justify paying $800 for a board when I got this for dirt cheap. So speaking on prices, if you go on Amazon and you look up the X570 Plus, which is the one that's in all the reviews, you'll find it for about $226, right? If you look up the X570 Pro, it's about $223, it's $3 less and I think that's because all the reviews talk about the X570 Plus and everybody wants that one, it overshadows this, so you can get this one at a cheaper price even though it's a better motherboard. Now, I decided to buy mine used. So when you go on Amazon, you go under the used section, it'll click on details, it'll tell you about what's missing, right? Some of them be like missing a manual and cables, it's missing the accessories, uh, the box is damaged or it's been repackaged. You can check the used ones on there, you can find them for about $135 right now. I was going through the list and I found this one for $138. Under the details, all it said was the box was damaged. So I rolled the dice and I purchased it. So this is what we got. So you can see the shipping label is kind of torn off. Uh, right here, it's got a little, it's got a little damage right here. You can see it. That's it. It's a little ding. It didn't even go through the box. And I love the sticker Amazon puts on here. It says, thanks to you, this product has a second life. I'm like, oh. The most important thing was this right here. So this is the manufacturer's sticker. What that means is that this box has never been opened and it's a brand new motherboard. So I'm super excited to finally open this thing and see what we have inside, shall we? second there I thought this motherboard might have been used because it was missing the CPU socket cover but it turns out these motherboards don't come with the cover. I was also missing the screws for installing the motherboard but that actually came with the case it doesn't come with the motherboard. The only thing I noticed was that the M.2 drive does not have a cover for the sticky portion but besides that everything looks good. I think it's a new motherboard. It's only one way to find out put everything into the system and test it. I'm not gonna put it in today because I would like to install the CPU and the RAM before I put this into the case. And another thing I noticed, I went back through my videos and that drone noise is still there, so I think that's coming from my microphone. I changed the settings on it thinking it might be that, but it's still doing it. So I think I need a new microphone. So hopefully next time we'll have some better audio. All right guys, so thanks for watching my video. If you wanna keep up with uh, the build, subscribe and as always until next time